It's almost springtime. That means flowers. All different color flowers. People love flowers. People love growing flowers. People love giving flowers. And flowers are beautiful. They smell nice. They grow pretty much any place. And people love them. Well, I'm going to show you which ones aren't only beautiful, but the ones you can eat. It's been winter time. It's been cold. It's been dreary. It's kind of sucked, to be perfectly honest. And a lot of people ask me to make this video, and I'm going to make this video, and it's taken me a long time, and that pisses me off. So you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. Okay, the first one up is called Common Burdock, and it can be found throughout most of the United States. It occurs along roadsides and ditch banks and in pastures and waste areas. Areas. The plant prefers moist, rich soils, but will grow in a variety of soils. Common Burdock is known to host powdery mildew and rot root, which can infect certain cash crops and other species. So isn't that delicious sounding? but you can eat it and it's very, very easy to come across. It's also known as a powerful medicine, but you can eat the stalks, the leaves, and the roots. They're all edible and can be downright tasty if you know how to prepare them. I'm gonna to try to find links for each one of these things so you can learn how to prepare them to eat them, but you can also do a little research on your own. So there you go. This one you could probably already guess, and I've seen these all over the United States, so these are dandelions. Dandelions can be prepared in a, a, a lot of different ways. You can do a dandelion green salad, which is the most simple way. You can saute them, just like sauteing onions, which is probably awesome. You can make dandelion fritters by collecting the flower heads, washing them, then batter in flour, egg, and milk, batter mix add to a pan with hot oil and cook until brown just like pancakes you can do dandelion root coffee and tea and you can bake with dandelion petals they're very versatile collect the flower heads remove the petals from the heads store them in a plastic bag in the freezer for longer keeping add the petals to just about anything you can bake like muffins bread cookies or quiche they can also be added to things like hamburgers, but you can also eat them on their own raw. So there's that. And again, research all these on your own. There's tons of information. And like I said, I'll leave links in the description, in the description box below the video. Number three is called lamb's quarter, but we would probably refer to them as weeds because that's what we call them, weeds. They're common weeds. The thing is, is including the leaves, flower, and stems, the seeds are edible, but the seeds contain something called saponin, a natural soap-like substance, so you shouldn't eat too many of them. So there's that. And it looks just like a weed. Some people call it wild spinach or goose foot, but they're highly nutritious, provide a fair amount of numbers of vitamins and minerals, including iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and A and C. The edible weed is also high in protein and fiber. If you enjoy eating lamb's quarter most when the plant is young and tender. But again, in America, we would look at this and consider this a common backyard weed and most people would cover it 
quickly with some sort of a Man Monsanto poison based plant remover but if you're smart in an emergency you can eat this everything including the seeds there'll be links below I'm getting sick of saying that but I'm gonna keep saying it because people ask for links number four is wild onions and I was sort of reluctant to run this one wild onions are pretty much everywhere onions grow everywhere you just need to know what to look for the reason I was reluctant to show this one is because there is a look-alike called Death Camus. Now, Death Camus looks almost identical to Wild Onion, except Death Camus has flat leaves. Flat leaves. But that doesn't really help. There could still be confusion. I found an article, and this, this sums it up perfectly. If a plant looks like an onion and smells like an onion, you can eat it. If it looks like a garlic and smells like a garlic, you can eat it. If you do not smell garlic or onion odor, but you have the right look, beware, you may have a similar looking toxic plant. So there you go. Wild onion. Number five is common milkweed. Now you've seen these things absolutely all over the place. They're the things that have pods on them that open up and little fluffy things come flying out like these. Yeah. Okay, apparently there's a question about milkweed, whether you should boil it or not boil it. And I got this from a website called Eat the Weeds, and it says, actually, that's not quite accurate. There's a general agreement that young milkweed shoots, leaves, and pods are edible after boiling. The two questions are, how many times should you change the water, and should the water always be boiling, or can you put them in cold water to start? Worse, at least two authoritative sources disagree on these exact things and exactly the opposite. Okay, this is confusing. I can't really get a good answer. Apparently you can eat these things, but you have to be incredibly careful. Plus, if you're going to eat milkweed, you better know what you're doing. But if properly prepared, it is edible. Number six. Now this should go without saying, but these things, they call them brambles, but I call them blackberries or whatever. And you find these from Missouri all the way over to the Atlantic Ocean, all over Eastern United States. And they're delicious. I eat these things all the time. But you have to be careful because wherever these are, these are. I found these berries from Maine all the way down to Georgia. They're delicious. They're seasonable. They're seasonal, but they're also delicious. Brambles, gooseberries, they're all really, really common and fairly easy to get in the spring when they're in season. Okay, number seven is called sheep sorrel. You've probably seen this stuff around. It's incredibly common all around the world. It's full of vitamins and nutrients, and sheep sorrel is used to treat bacterial infections such as salmonella, E. coli, and staph. Now, you can pull this right off the ground and eat it. It supposedly has a tart taste, but you can pick it right off the ground and eat it if need be. You could also make it into a salad or prepare it any number of ways, but it does have a lot of medicinal purposes as well as nutritional purposes. So it's a pretty good one. At any rate, number eight. Number eight is chickweed, and it's an edible green leafy plant that grows in most predominantly throughout Europe and North America climates, but it is native to a variety of temperate locations all over the world. It is one of the top most common weeds as its seeds are easily transported, making their way to most moist, shady sections of earth typically found growing in large patches in early spring it is a cooler weather species that often thrives all year long when conditions are optimal and wild chickweeds are one of nature's top superfoods for purifying the blood and lymph lymphatic system these properties are directly responsible for well-known effects for skin healers Taken both internally, applied topically, it is excellent for rashes, itchiness, and most other skin conditions. All in all, chickweed is badass, and you can eat all of it. The root, the stem, the plant, everything. 
It feeds you and fixes you. What's better than that? Number nine. Okay, number nine is red clover. And clovers can be found pretty much anywhere. In fields, thickets, thickets, roadsides, in any other random location. Clovers in general are healthy to eat in any way, basically in a salad, as a cooked green, ground to flour, or blended into a tea. They're high in protein, most common thing to eat on the clover are the flower heads and the leaves, but it's easy to eat them if you soak them for about an hour or so, or boiled. That's what they tell me, that's what I'm telling you, so there is that. Number 10. Okay, before I get to number 10, you see the little markings on those clovers? If clover leaves don't have those little white markings on them that you can see right now, do not eat them. A little caveat I'm telling you about. Okay, so now number 10 on the list is miner's lettuce. Miner's lettuce is found from British Columbia down to Guatemala North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Utah, and Arizona. It is also known as clasp leaf lettuce, Indian lettuce, and the generic name is who cares because that's not what you're going to be thinking. But here's what you can do. You can saute this. You can eat this as, a, as, as the name kind of says. You can eat it as lettuce in a salad. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. And just like with everything else on this list, I'm going to leave a link below that applies to each and everything I'm showing you on this list so you can figure it out for yourself. A lot of research went into this. So do your due diligence and check it out for yourself. Now, for the latter part of this video, I'm going to focus specifically on the Western United States because they have a drier climate and edible plants are harder to find. So here we go with number 11, which would be the prickly pear cactus. And my buddy Boyd out in Arizona told me about this, and I think I told you that in a video a couple few months ago. But the cactus and their fruits are a large part of Mexican cuisine and people that live in the Western United States. The wide, flat cactus pads are used in many dishes, such as salads, eggs, and as a filling for other dishes. They use these in prickly pear jellies. There's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of ways to make this into a food product, but you can eat them raw, but you want to eat the fruit of the prickly pear, not the pads themselves. And as the name applies, these are incredibly thorny. So use caution when trying to harvest these and beware of what could probably be around them, which would be rattlesnakes, scorpions, etc. But if you're out west and you're in survival mode, you're already probably well aware of the animals that could cause harm to you while you're trying to harvest the delicious prickly pear. At any rate, that would be number 11 on to numero 12. You like that? Numero 12, ladies and gentlemen. Now this one everyone knows because mesquite. You cook with mesquite wood, it makes your food taste phenomenal. But mesquite on its own has a lot of purposes that I had no idea about whatsoever at all. You can take mesquite and make jelly from it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I had no clue. But that's why we're making this video. You see what I'm saying? At any rate. These things grow pods that look very similar to garden peas. You can take these peas grind them up into a nutritious flour and apparently it's got a history of use that goes back to the Mexicans, the Native Americans, and people from southwestern United States. I had no idea. Again, I figured this was just for making a steak taste really good, but there's a lot of uses. You can use the wood for smoking, you can make furniture, tool handles, but the bean pods, the blossoms, the leaves, the sap, and even the roots are edible, can be eaten, and they all have medicinal uses. So this is a very important plant and it's found in a dry region of the United States. Because I know I've got a lot of subscribers that are on the West Coast, so I didn't want to leave you guys out. But you probably already knew this. So again, links will be in the description box for everything I cover in here. On to the next. So number 13 is agave. 
Now, for all you drunkards out there, you'll know that that's one of the main ingredients in tequila, but we're talking about surviving off of plants that you can find in the wild. These things right here, you can literally roast the leaves, you chew them out, you chew them, spit out the fiber, the leaves can also be boiled and the juice used as a soup. The leaves and juice can be too bitter to eat. There are over 200 agave species, so make sure that you have an edible one. Again, I will leave links in the description below. Don't cut these things with a chainsaw, and if you do, wear eye protection because the juice in them can cause serious problems to you. People have been using these things for like 9,000 years, so I saw a ton of these when I was out west a couple of months ago, and one of my favorite ones was the century tree that a buddy of mine pointed out to me. Turns out it's part of the agave family, these things right here. I thought they were amazing, and they were literally everywhere, plus... You can use the juice to uh, cool burns, itching, etc., things like that. You know what I mean? But there's so many uses for it. I can't cover it in this video because this video is getting ridiculously long. Anyways, links, description below. 14. Number 14 is the Pinion Pine. It's a slow-growing, compact, long-living, drought-tolerant tree. And I saw these all over the southwest you can use these for a variety of things you can use the sap as a solve for a cut an abrasion for rashes etc and navajos native americans mexicans and southwestern people have been harvesting the pine cones and the nuts because the nuts can be used to absolutely bake or produce anything and the variety is absolutely ridiculous and they can be eaten raw as well again i'm going to leave a pdf down below for this one along with links for everything else i keep saying that because people always ask me in the comments where are the links they're in the description box below but this tree is all over the southwest and can be very helpful in a survival situation for nutritional and medicinal purposes like many things on this list are at any rate, number 15. Number 15 is desert chia, like uh, chia pets, the stuff that's popular health food chia, same thing. Now, I've actually found desert chia myself and made it into tea, but I'll warn you, when I found desert chia, I also discovered jumping cactus because they were right next to each other and the cactus embedded itself into my elbow like it was shot out of a cannon. I had been warned about it, but I didn't heed the warning. At any rate, desert chia can be used in tea. You can eat the seeds for energy. There's a veritable cornucopia of things you can do with this seed. Anything you could do with chia you bought from a store, you could do with desert chia. You could make it into bread. You could make it into a flour of sorts you know, to bake with, etc. And people have been using this. Like most of the things I've shown you in the desert, they've been using this for thousands and thousands of years. And these type of things can literally save you if you find yourself needing, alone, and desperate. So there, as they say, is that. Now, number 16, you've probably seen jackasses on YouTube eating cattails. But cattails indeed are edible, and I am moving away from the West for now to cover this one because I didn't want to forget. Cattails are edible. In fact, cattails produce more starch per acre than crops like tomatoes and yams. Yet unlike potatoes and yams, you can eat more than just the root. Different parts of the cattail produce something edible at different stages of development. Make sure you're eating them from clean water or soil. Don't eat them from a swamp or a gutter runoff, etc. But there's a lot of the cattail that you can eat. And like I said, don't fall for the jerk-offs on YouTube eating them as a joke, just stuffing the top part in their mouth because that's dumb. It's not how it's done. Pioneers, Native Americans, lots of people lived on these as a daily staple, and you can too in an emergency. There's a lot to cattails that 
people don't cover quite often enough. And again, there'll be informative links that expand on this even more in the description below. Number 17. Now, 17 is something I have experience with. I'm out in Arizona in the middle of nowhere, and I called my father to explain that I had just discovered the jumping cactus or a chola cactus. But these things can literally embed themselves in your bones, and it sucks. It's almost impossible to get them out because... They have very fine haired spines. They're very hard to remove. They're impossible to see and pull out. They suck, but you can eat them. To eat them, rehydrate them overnight in some water. So soak them in water or boil them straight away. And then simmer them till they're tender. It can take anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes. If you really like them and want to eat your buds faster, dehydrate them, cook them, and then freeze them in a bag. But remember, if you're plucking these off a cactus, take a couple from one side and a couple from another. Don't strip the plant or it can't reproduce and that would suck. So there's that. Number 18. Okay, I'm putting American elderberries on the list because they look like blueberries. If people are in survival mode, they're going to try to eat them. Notice the stem. Notice the flower. Notice the color. American elderberries are completely safe, and so aren't the leaves, the stems, and the bark, as long as you cook them. You cannot eat these things raw because they'll make you sick. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And if you're in a survival mode where you're literally eating berries off a tree that you're not sure about, the last thing you want is to get incredibly sick. But I figured I'd put this on the list for that reason specifically. And don't forget, if you're messing around berry trees, there's always a chance of this. That would suck, but bears do hang around berry patches, so be very cautious when you're doing this. The last thing you want to do is get ragdolled by a bear. Okay, number 19. It's wild ginger. The plants are low growing, the leaves are vaguely similar to colt's foot leaves, but wild ginger, the leaves are heart shaped. The flowers are pollinated by flies and supposedly smell like rotting meat to attract them to find a place to lay their eggs. So do yourself a huge solid. If you find wild ginger, clean it, rinse it off as much as you can because that is disgusting. But the the nutritional and medicinal purposes for wild ginger are staggering. I'm going to leave a video link below to, in the description box to a YouTuber who covers all the Native Americans' traditional methods of using wild ginger and how to get it prepared. Finally, number 20. Now, the last one on my list is probably one of the most important ones. If you're a hiker or a camper or you have a big backyard, you know what stinging nettles are. They suck. They sting, hence the name. But it is amazing how much this one plant can do. Arthritis, Alzheimer's. It's got every vitamin in the world, for the most part, inside of it. You can eat probably almost all of this. And again, I'm going to leave links this video is just a gloss over of all of these. The links that will be below in the description will be your pathway to discovering exactly what all of these plants can do for you nutritionally and medically, for real. Stinging nettles, I had absolutely no clue these were any nutritional value, but it turns out they are like superfood. And medical-wise, they can cure pretty much anything, or at least ease it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below and I will return the favor. I am out.